Uh, peasant militia. Fill a row with peasants. Uh, this is... I kind of took a bit of a notice on this card just the other day. I think they said this will fill it up to a soft cap on your row. Uh, something that's also another thing I think they're introducing. As When I was reading this Reddit thread, they're introducing a soft cap. So maybe let's say it spawns 10 of these, right? What is spawn 10? 10 seems like a lot. Let's say it spawns 8. It spawns 8 peasants. Uh, if you're playing like some kind of like Jennifer deck, this seems like it'd be absolutely ridiculous. And like, can you imagine this card in, uh, in conjunction with... Uh, <laughs> Uh, seed support. This card either seems incredibly crazy. No, this card just seems like like at a base level, like okay, like not amazing, or it's like absolutely insane. And it's a neutral card too, so you can use you can use it even in like swarm monsters. This seems absolutely insane. It seems like too powerful. Fill a row. What is filling a row? How many is that? This seems crazy. Like there's so many synergies in the game that could take advantage of this. Also, it can be really good at blocking uh, like frost. Because you'd be just doing one damage every turn. This card seems crazy. I think it like I expect to see a lot of this card, at least experimentation with like swarm decks. But also we need like some kind of like anti swarm to deal with cards like this, too. We'll see. There is the card like again, Garl will reset everything. So if they do actually boost this, you can just reset it like Geralt and this card. Both seem like cards. They're going to see a lot of play coming up. Half Elf Hunter spawn a copy of this unit. So if you're boosting this whole bunch in your hand, it's gonna get it's gonna copy those boosts over. This seems really powerful in boosting hand uh, decks. I expect to see a lot of it. Like hell, I may even like make a deck that takes advantage of this. Like this in conjunction with that one card, that relatively new card that will deal damage based on how uh based on what its boosted strength is, that that's a card as well. And you can just play this as well for tempo without needing a target to hit with so this seems crazy powerful like at a base level this is already it's this oh whoa, 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 whoa. No, no no it's not copying a unit over from its boosted strength it's spawning a copy of this unit okay that's a lot weaker than i thought okay wait a second this isn't just become instantly 12 strength bronze when you play it and then you know up to like 20 strength bronze just from a couple buffs no 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 this is spawning a copy of it. This is tutoring out a copy from your deck. I think that's still pretty good because, it, you know, it's deck thinning and it's uh, fairly high strength. So maybe you just play two of you play one and then you play the other one out. I think they could be. I, I still think that has a place. That's a pretty good tempo option in a, in a deck archetype or deck, you know, structure that doesn't really have a whole lot of good high tempo options. But then again, like Skotel already has a lot. I think it, I think it'll be used. I think it'll be used. This is a good, nice tempo option. This is twelve strength, you know, on turn one, whatever round one. Viper Witcher deal three damage, increase damage up by one for each alchemy card in your initial deck. Deal three damage, increase damage in your initial. What does it mean, initial deck? Does that mean you can't you can't put alchemy cards back into it when the game starts? Deal three damage, increase damage. To so basically, this is just going to be. A 10 strength bronze on average. Now, how many alchemy cards are you putting in your deck? Let's say it's a 12 strength bronze on average. That's doing filled, uh, that's doing five damage. Is five damage good enough to put this card in? Maybe, maybe not. I think this is a card that needs to be seen in action and see how many alchemy cards are typically in a in a in a deck. I think it's a little I'm a little bit unsure about it. So we'll just move on for now. I don't I it has but I think it has some good potential. But I think if the damage is too low, then it doesn't really matter. You just rather pick a bronze unit that's going to get value regardless of the damage you're doing. <clears throat> like you already have uh, the protector or is a protector or whatever. The, the one that's doing two damage per spy. But you wouldn't run these in the same deck. This would be in different decks. It could be interesting. Um, let's see. Werewolf. Monsters. Seven power immune. Strengthen seven on contact with moonlight. It's a bronze unit that gains seven strength on contact with moonlight. What is moonlight? Is that some kind of like row wide effect? Immune. What is immune again? Let's let's double check that. You can't attack. You can't attack it or boost it with spells. You can't attack it or boost it with spells. AOE effect works. Uh, I think I need to see what moonlight is before I can really comment on that. Vincent. 
Destroy the armor of all units, then boost self by half the value destroyed. That seems kind of weak. It does say all units. So if you're playing a deck that has a lot of armor across lots of units, then this could be interesting, but it seems kind of at a base level weak. Because you already have the the heavy cavalry They're already that's already stripping the armor off units. I don't think you'd be able to run both. So I don't really care for this card. Like heavy cavalry, heavy cavalry already. It does say all units. That means it could be even be your enemy's units. But then, like, how often are you actually going up against an enemy that's also using armor? Right? I don't know. Like, heavy, cal heavy cavalry, if I could say that word right, already does the job that this card is theoretically supposed to do. And heavy cavalry gets the full value, not just half. So I don't think this card is very strong. And also, it's taking up a silver spot, which I think is pretty competitive in armor uh, northern realms. Brewis Ritual. Oh, this is a sad little picture. <laughs> Resurrect two bronze deathless units. Resurrect two bronze deathless units. So if you're playing some kind of deathless deck, this could be really good. Uh, and beyond that, I won't really, I don't have anything else to comment. Like you're not going to play this outside of a deathless deck, right? And if you do, if you want deathless de units to come back, then you'll know if you want to put this card in there. It is pretty weak as a one strength gold body. I'm surprised it's not just a spell. Why isn't it just a spell? If it's just one strength anyway. Anyway, uh, deathless decks, otherwise useless. Of course. I mean, that's not like a knock against it. That's just saying the facts. Uh, Kian. I hope I'm saying that right. Northern Realms, four power strength, gold card. Spawn a bronze or silver alchemy card or spawn a bronze or silver item. So basically, this is going to be like a, a side grade John Atalus, it seems like. Alchemy or item card. Alchemy or item. And it's basically, you're more or less going to be assured that you get the card you want most of the time. Alchemy or... Alchemy or item, alchemy or item. I don't really know what the alchemy or item is. I don't really know what the alchemy or item cards are just at this moment. Like exactly what they are or what you're looking for. But this seems like a very powerful card if you're trying to tutor those cards out. If they're part of your combo. Uma's Curse. Uh, God, that thing's ugly. Spawn a cold unit and transform into it. Spawn a gold unit. It has to be a gold unit. So it can't be a spell. Oh, is that why all these cards are like... Uh, have gold body like very minor gold bodies on them is because it can't transform into a spell so you can't like bring a gold weather it has to be one of these like once one or four strength ones so you're spawning it so it's kind of like a royal decree except you get two of them it's kind of like a renew but before it actually goes to the graveyard i think this card could be exceptionally powerful in certain decks but as far as like in practice i'd have to see how it goes but as as a proof of concept i really like this card Seems really powerful. This seems crazy powerful. <laughs> like, can you imagine getting like three woodland spirits or something crazy like that? This card seems crazy powerful. I like it. Yennefer Tremors spawn the last bronze or silver spell you played. This seems weak at a base level. It is a spell. No, it has five power, so it's not showing up here, I guess. Spawn the last bronze or silver spell you played. How often do you actually want to spawn the last bronze or silver spell you played? And wait, if it's spawning the last one you played? I mean, you'd have to have... How would you do that with the silver spell? I don't know. I'd have to see this in practice. I don't like it so far. And I'm saying that a lot of like, oh, it's in practice. That's just saying basically like, I don't really know how to evaluate this card unless, I actually, unless you put it into a deck and see how it works. Uh, it seems bad, but we'll see. I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> it seems bad, but we'll see. I'm not, you know, I'm not writing any of these cards off as unplayable or anything like that or absolutely broken just yet. Deal demons, deal two damage to each damage unit to, yeah, to each damage enemy. This is kind of going in line with that one card, that one silver card that will boost itself by one for each damage enemy. Uh, this could be interesting. Like they're kind of looks like they're kind of trying to push like a Herald deck and like a Tremors and Rain, and Yennefer, things like that. I think there will definitely be an archetype uh, with like with this like huge card that's coming out, uh, the kind of like as a finisher. Uh, I think this card, I think, like uh, like an Axeman like discard brand deck or whatever Herald deck, whatever you want to call it, or whatever you want to align with rather. Uh, it's already a thing, and if you just add in like one of these cards right here, and like that one silver card, maybe that pushes over the edge. But then maybe are you putting too much of your bat, too much of your haze in one basket? Like, what if they're not playing a lot of uh, enemy units, right? Or what if they're playing units that are, like, just one strength and get destroyed anyway? 
this I think there will definitely be an, a room for experimentation with this archetype, but I don't think it will be strong enough to be uh, in the top one or two tiers, especially this gold card in particular, uh, because it relies on the enemies not only being there, but being damaged and not being destroyed, which I don't think is uh, all that possible, typically. Uh, Xavier, like if you're going into a long round, you already have the tools that are going to win you the game with gold weathers and axemen and other things like that. So why do you need this card? What what role does this play except to give you a little bit more tempo? Like how often are you actually going to like get more than like one or two units off, right? I would say this, had to, this would reliably have to get five units every time it comes out. I don't think that's very reliable or expected. Nine strength, gold, skull, dwarf, boost this unit by the starting power of the last dwarf you played. So th let's say you play out uh, like Yevren, Yegren, whatever it is, that what, seven strength dwarf, silver dwarf. This gets boosted up to 16. I think this is weak. This is really, I think this is really, really weak. And that's like optimal, right? You're playing that seven, seven or eight strength dwarf and you go up to like 16 or 17. Uh, this seems weak. And it says the starting power, so you can't even like use a couple of boosts to get it up a couple more points. Seems weak. Moving on. Maybe if you're playing an all dwarf archetype kind of archetype, maybe you play this, but doesn't seem strong enough. I don't know how competitive the gold the gold card and dwarf decks are. Maybe if it's not very competitive, maybe you just put this in there for a solid tempo. But other than just giving you points, it doesn't do anything. Which, I mean, it seems weird to say that since, like, most cards are basically that. But if you're playing, like, a gold card that relies on playing a bunch of a whole bunch of dwarfs, I feel like it would do more than just get you, like, 14 to 17 points of tempo. But I don't know. Maybe that's all. Maybe that's all. But see, don't, don't dwarfs already have lots of tempo options? So they need a big tempo option like this? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Ornamental sword for Skellige. Silver spell card. It's an item. Uh, spawn a Skullgus Soldier and strengthen it by three. So I guess if you're trying to tutor out a specific unit. Eh. Meh. I'll just move on. Meh. Parasite. Choose. Ew, gross. Choose one. Deal damage to an enemy or boost an ally by 12. Deal 12 damage to an enemy or boost an ally by 12. This is monsters. And it's only boosting an ally. Uh, Arachni Val... Like Arachni Val... Ugh. Can't say it. Arachni Venom does 12, right? And that does it spread across three units, but this will do it. And like uh, Commander Swarm will do 20 across five. So is doing it against one big unit in either direction better than those cards? I don't think so. I think this card is bad. Not because it's like the power. Like this could be 14 damage or 14 strength. I still don't think it'd be that good. I just don't see the opportunities where this is actually useful currently. Like, how often are you actually going to be able to do 12 damage to an enemy, right? Like, never. And uh, when you, like, boosting yourself by 12 is just asking yourself to get a need, smite, or scorch, or reset, or whatever. Uh, Pavco Gale. Play a random bronze or silver item for your deck. It's Skotel. It says random. I don't like random. I think this is bad at a base level. Moving on. It's really weird that they're introducing the random mechanic when they already introduced spawn. That's really weird. I don't like this card at all. Hubert Rech. <laughs> I can't say any of these names. Uh, drain, drain all boosts from units in your deck. Drain. Let's see. Drain. No, there's no drain here. I'm assuming that means uh, like if you play full test and you boost all units in your deck by one. This will reset all units in your deck, but then it will take all those buffs and put it on itself. I love this design. This is really, really cool. So if you can somehow manage to boost the units in your deck multiple times over with things like uh, uh, Full Test and Dandelion, right? And then he takes this and he just like is 20 strength or something crazy like that. That'd be absolutely incredible. I love it. This is a really cool design. I like it. Oh, this is so good. I like this. I can't like it may not be like a top tier card. Uh, because, you know, boosting yourself by a considerable amount is just like I said before and asking for trouble. But I, I think it's really interesting. And I like, I like this little, like, he's, like, looking at that booty over there. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, Streb Stregobor, a neutral 10 strength bronze silver, or 10 strength silver unit. Uh, truce, each player draws a unit and sets its power to one. Ooh, this is really interesting. The truce means basically no players have passed. It's like a, there used to be a mechanic in the past that basically was like that. I forget what it's called off. 
top of my head. But this is really, really cool because it's like a you're so you're going to be drawn. You're going to be using this card in a deck where you don't care. This power gets set to one. And you're just trying to draw cards or you're just trying to log in around. It's like another it's another card that will it's like a half Avalak, but it has a 10 strength body. This card, I think, is really, really powerful in combo decks or in decks that like like uh, really like long rounds. Really strong card. I expect this is played in a lot of like uh, spell towel and like Axemen and things like that. Really, really good. Ointment. Choose one. Heal an ally and randomly split five boosts between allies. A resurrect bronze unit with five or less power. Heal an ally and randomly split. Okay, so this is a Nilfgaard spell item. And it's an alchemy item. <laughs> Weird. Heal an ally and randomly split five boosts between allies. Five boosts between allies. Okay, okay. Split five boosts. That means you, you have five... You boost like five allies by one. Okay. You're healing an ally. How powerful is that going to be in the Nilfgaard deck? Probably not very, not very much. A resurrect a bronze unit with five or less power. Which means you can't hit your. You can't hit your. Uh, your impair brigades and. Whatever protector, whatever they're called. This seems really weak. And I think I'll just leave it at that. Seems weak. Uh, why is it why is it weak? Because healing an ally and splitting that five beast between allies is like either oh this is a bronze card though this is bronze okay that's a lot better I thought this was a silver for some reason okay if it's a bronze I can see this being a lot more powerful I'm kind of I don't really like that they're giving this class resurrect I think they had one like one really big overhaul in Northern Realms where they took away their resurrects and I. Not a big fan of them reintroducing it to another class anyway. It's kind of like, didn't you learn from that mistake from before? Right. But it is five or less power, so it's not just a free revive. And like, this is just under the power level of a lot of the cards you want to revive. And that's kind of the thing. Like, you're either reviving nothing or it's like basically nothing. But you like basically just have to be reviving your uh, your medics, right? That'd be the only card you off the top of my head that I think you'd want to revive. I don't know. It seems weak. Like if you're playing a like this, this would be tacked into a very or not tacked, but this would be placed in a very specific deck archetype. But outside of that, uh, I don't think it's much play. Boulder, special organic, neutral bronze. Deal seven to the enemy and move it to the row above. The row is full. Uh, soft lock or soft cap rather. Destroy the enemy instead. I think it's not like the amount of times you're gonna like have it be the row be full. I think it's not going to be a very reliable thing. And dealing seven damage is just a uh, is Owls or Thunder, but this is a little bit of an upside. Just to note, I believe they said they're buffing Owls or Thunder to nine, which I think is... Uh, I think Owls or Thunder was already pretty powerful, and now buffing it to nine seems a little bit of an overkill. I think it could have been buffed to eight safely, and then like lower this to six damage. It's just kind of like pushing like bronze power, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's just something to take note of. Uh, so uh, I'd rather just play Alistair Thunder. Alistair Thunder is going to kill most of what you want to destroy anyway. But if like you're playing a big, like if it's a meta heavy of Swarm, maybe that becomes powerful. But then the enemy you're destroying, is that even going to be over that 7th strength? Probably not. Deal damage equal to a base power of a bronze to in your hand. Deal damage equal to the base power of a bronze. This is just like a weaker gold version of that Nilfgaard card. And like Nilfgaard card is just a one of, and it's not even all that powerful in that sense. I think this card's weak. Moving on. Like if you're looking to damage something with a bronze unit, a uh, broad spell, just use uh, just use Outer Thunder. Skellige Beastmaster. Oh yeah, but wait, this is an item, right? So maybe because of that item tag, maybe that changes. But I don't know. I'd rather just use Outer Thunder. Uh, Skellige Beastmaster to one strength bronze unit. Better be really good. Spawn a bear. Okay, spawn a bear. That's pretty good. I think that's nothing crazy. It's just strong. Uh, it's gonna be placed in. Uh, relatively specific archetype where you're trying to have all these beasts out these cursed beasts bears whatever powerful not like not meta shifting crazy but it's strong i think it's strong tormented mage bronze two strength nilf guard not nilf guard northern realms look at the two bronze look at the look at two bronze spells or items from your deck and play one Seems bad. 
Maybe one. It seems like uh, that one card from Nuff Card. Uh, Vicovaro Emissary? No, no. Vicovaro Medic? No, no. Not Vicovaro Medic. Whatever. Vicovaro, whatever. Uh, this seems just like a weaker version of that. Maybe you play this like one or two of in a deck that has spells or items. That's like a kind of control. I don't know. Seems kind of weak. But if you're trying to tutor this card out, it's it's good. But outside of that, I mean, outside of that, of course, it can be bad. What are you? What are you gonna do? You're gonna play this with like in a deck that doesn't have <laughs> items or spells? <laughs> no. Okay, slave driver. Uh, spawn a bronze unit from your opponent's deck. Spawn a bronze unit from your opponent's deck. If you're actually stealing it, like it's actually insane. If you're not stealing it, then it's just just put the good card, put the good bronze units in your own deck. That's kind of like the that's kind of like an issue that I have right now. It's I don't know what spawn means exactly. Are you stealing it? Are you just spawning a copy? I don't know. I'm going to assume it is steel in that sense. It's good, and if it's not steel, then this is just garbage. Panther, Fort strength. Man, there's a lot of this. I'm already at 40 minutes. That's insane. Like whenever Trump does it, his are like 10 minutes each, and I feel like I'm not going at a slow pace either. Panther, Fort strength, bronze, skull tail unit. Deal damage to an enemy on a row with less than three units. So basically you're just getting an average strength bronze with a caveat that needs to be on a row with less than three units. Seems weak. Moving on. Although it is kind of like a, an owls of thunder with a little, like it's not even that it's not even that this is just bad. It's like an owls of thunder with two more strength, but owls of thunder doesn't have that dumb caveat of needing to be on a row with, a row with less than three. Seems really bad. Maybe that beast tag somehow makes it better, but I doubt it. 